Do you want to create a countdown timer app in UIKit and Swift UI? Well, you're in luck because in this tutorial, we are going to do just that. Feel free to check out the chapters down below and hit that subscribe button, open up Xcode and let's dive in. Countdown timer and timer. So this is what we are going to learn today in UIKit and Swift UI. So let's get UIKit out of the way because that's really simple to use and maybe you are here for UIKit. If you are not, go ahead and check out the timestamps and jump to the Swift UI version. So, uh, and make sure that you just download the resources in the link in the description where you can find the links to the GitHub repositories. So here I just created a simple, yeah, this is the demo project that you can download. It has a label and three buttons, play, pause and reset. So we want to uh, count down from 10. And uh, this is in UIKit. So I just really, uh, this is really rare, but I just added in the main.storyboard some uh, buttons and a, a label. And I just connected that in, uh, to my view controller. So yeah, it's not loading, but yeah, here it is. So uh, this is it. You can do this really, really quickly or check out the link in the description. So um, creating a timer. So first of all, we want to create a variable that will hold the time remaining and that will be 10 in our case. So var time remaining and uh, it will be of type int and 10. And you could omit uh, the definition there of type int, but yeah, I like this at this point because we are going to use CG float in the next uh, example. So. Uh, finally, we want to create a timer, timer, and let's bang on wrap that because I'm pretty sure that we will use that. So we have that exclamation mark there. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to uh, create the play tabbed uh, timer. So here we just grab this timer and initialize it. And I'm just going to go timer, and this one, and then schedule. So, or schedule, schedule, it depends on your uh, preferences. Schedule timer, scheduled timer with a time interval, target, selector, and user info, and repeat. So please choose this one because it's really, really easy to do. So, so let me just have some more space here. Now the time interval, uh, that's one because I want this to be repeating in one second. So I will just go ahead and add true for repeat target is self and selector i will create a function called step so let's add in here pound selector and just call it step i would add that in just a second user info i will not add any user info it doesn't really matter at this point so let's create our objective c function okay and that will be step there we go and uh, uh, here I just want to create some logic because uh, the timer will hit zero at some point. So whenever this is more than zero, I want to subtract, subtract one uh, from the time remaining. And of course, add it to the labels text property. So uh, if time remaining is greater than zero, then we just subscribe, subtract. Really, really hard to pronounce that, subtract. Okay, so else we are going to stop the timer. So timer.invalidate. And we want to set the time remaining variable back to its original phase, so 10. So time remaining, time remaining equals 10, okay. Uh, and finally, after we had this check here on the if else statement, we just want to grab the labels text property and set it to with string import relation interpolation. We want to set this to the time remaining. So time remaining. Okay. So yeah, that's it for time remaining. Sorry about that. Okay. Auto completion. Come on. So play tab. Uh, I'm just going to go through the pause and reset because it's really, really simple. And then we'll just test it. So pausing means that we are just going to invalidate the timer. Really simple, 
straightforward. Now, when we are resetting, we also want to uh, invalidate, so timer.invalidate, but we want to do some other stuff like set back the time remaining to 10 and then set the label, label dot text also to the current time remaining, which will, by the way, will be 10, but I'm just going to use again string interpolation. And basically that's it. You have a countdown timer. So let's build and run. And of course, this is in UIKit and we are going to check it out in Swift UI in just a second. So there we go. Let's play. And we can pause that. Let's pause the seven. We can resume that by tapping on play again. And of course we can reset it back to 10. And let me just hit play there so you can see it's uh, doing its thing again. So yeah, that's it in UIKit. If you have come here for UIKit, you're done. But now let's take a look at Swift UI. And uh, let me just take a look at the demo project because I'm just going to build out this really, really nice user interface. And we are going to uh, have the start and pause button on the same uh, label. So yeah, really nice stuff. So let me just preview this. So. If we tap on the uh, play button here under the preview, you will see that we can start and it's really, really making this nice circular progress view, which changed to yellow and then to uh, red. How awesome is that? And once it's done, it's resetted again. Now, of course, we could well, pause this and we may reset this. I won't uh, go into details here. So we are going to build out this from scratch. So let me just go ahead and create a brand new project. So file new project. And this will be an app. Let me just resize this. Uh, let's hit next here. And uh, I would just name this countdown timer. Why not? Uh, make sure that you select Swift UI and here Swift UI app. And then click on next because this is the latest version. This is uh, where the future, so-called the future. So let's create that. And uh, yeah, let's just have here some stuff. Uh, and all we will do is just build all of this out in the content view. So let me just remove that and have some more space here. Maybe let's just resume this. So we see maybe we need to have this resized. Okay, so uh, while it's building, let's put down some uh, defaults. And I will do this outside the content view struct. And um, uh, the first one is the default time remaining. So let default time remaining. Okay, and that will be of type CG float. And uh, you will see in just a second why we need CG float. We are going to divide and uh, calculate uh, that uh, the how much time there is so we can have that nice circular progress view. Okay, uh, next up, we want to have the line width of that progress. Again, CG float. And um, let's have here 30 maybe, and then uh, the radius of our circular uh, progress view. Let me just resize this. Okay, really, really nice. And yeah, let's just have this a little bit down so we have this uh, buttons available. So let radius, that's where we are, and that will be a CG float, and let's equal to 70. Okay, so I found this to be a really good numbers here. Okay, now it's time to set some uh, states and uh, of course the timer. So inside the content view, but not inside the body, make sure that you had your states outside the body. Uh, let's have these two states. So at state, uh, of course, states are always private, var, and uh, is active. Now we want to know if the progress is active, like are we counting now, basically. Uh, finally, or the last state here is again private. 
var is how time the time remaining so time remaining because the first default time remaining that's the default so we can set back to that default value but here we are uh, storing the time remaining in a state and again this will be a cg float and uh, for now let's use just the default time remaining okay now it's time to create the timer so let timer equals and it's kind of uh, not the same definitely not the same uh, it's kind of creating publishers so uh, let's have your timer i'm just going to uh, type it out and you will see so publish i'm just going to use every on in <laughs> i know it's a mouthful but you can take a look at it returns a publisher that repeatedly emits the current date on the given interval so yeah that's that's what we want time interval one seconds that's okay now the run loop we want this to be on the main thread because we want to update uh, the ui and uh, run loop mode uh, that will be dot common okay so and finally we want to have auto connect so auto connect so this starts automatically nice okay now it's time to build out some views so go ahead and uh, delete the text hello world with that padding and um, yeah let's start off um, with let's see let's start off with the circle okay circle okay and that should take care of all the errors really nice and we can resume here so we can take a look at what we got okay now uh, let's add some modifiers to this circle so first of all we want to add a stroke and uh, we are going to use the one with stroke with style okay now the uh, the color let's have here color let's say a gray with opacity so color dot gray opacity and um, i found this 0 0.2 to be really nice and the style now we want to have a style of uh, with the line width and the line cap so let's just start typing that out so stroke style and uh, here it is uh, line width i will just choose the line width that we set up earlier uh, line cap and uh, if you hit the dot you will see that we have but round square uh, but we are going to use round here and i think all of the other stuff is kind of useless in our case so we can safely remove them okay so that will be uh, and I think I deleted, uh, yes, there it is. So this will be our uh, background circle. So we want to add a foreground circle, which is going to be animated. Okay, so again, circle. There we go. And uh, yeah, let's add, uh, let's see what we add maybe let's add a stroke again so i'm just going to copy this out and paste it in there and not with gray let's have this as green okay uh, and uh, of course <laughs> yeah why am i not seeing this because we need to add all of this into a z stack so z stack and just copy both of them right over here nice and there it is we have our green color now uh, we want to kind of have this to be starting on the on the top of our circle so we want to have a rotation effect here so dot rotation effect and uh, we are going to have uh, degrees and minus 90 okay because i do know that it's going to be by default it's going to be start on the right there and uh, finally we want to have some animation here and uh, some ease out so dot animation dot is in and out okay now how do we actually make this uh, to be kind of trimming off and yeah that's that's the word 
And let's have here, for now, let's just add in here a trim from 0 to, let's say, 0 0.5. And uh, as you can see, now we have this halfway field. And I'm just going to add this to in just a second later on. Now, what we want to add in here is uh, basically a, a vertical stack. Uh, let's see. But before we do that, let's, before we add the buttons, let's add our text of the actual countdown numbers there. So that will be a text. And uh, for now, let's just add in here. I believe that is the uh, time remaining. Yes. Let me just copy that out and paste that in there. And um, yeah, maybe we want to have this as an integer. So let's have int there. Okay, now that's really, really small. So I will add in a font there, font dot large title. Yeah, really nice. Uh, and on the Z stack, I want to make this a little bit smaller. So I will just have a frame for it. So frame with a width and height. And uh, if you recall, we have uh, this radius. Uh, where are, where is the radius? I think, yes, all the way up here. So here is the radius. So the width should be radius multiplied by two. And again, radius multiplied by two. Alignment, I don't really care about the alignment, so we can remove that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's add in a V stack. So, V stack, because now we are going to create those buttons. So, let me just move all of this over there. So, we have our Z stack. And now we want to add a horizontal stack because I'm going to add in two buttons. So, H stack. And uh, while we are here, let me just add in. Uh, spacing for our V stack. You will see why, because otherwise those labels will be right below that circular view. So let me just add the spacings, spacing while we are here. I found 25 to be okay. And again, on the horizontal stack, spacing 25. Okay. So <laughs> being that out of the way, let's add our labels. So our first label, label, and I'm going to use the one with the title and the system image name. We are going to use system image name. So the title, uh, for now, let's let this be play. And the system image name, if I'm correct, that's play.fill. Okay, there it is. And now let's stylize this because this is really, really small. And uh, what I want to add in here is a, a foreground color and maybe some fonts. Okay, so dot foreground color. And um, let's have this as red dot red. And then let's add a font here. Uh, I don't know, maybe title. That should be okay. And finally, I want to add an on tap gesture. And I'm just going to use this one with the perform because on one tab, that's what I want here. Okay, and that looks nice. And uh, let me just copy this out and just paste another one here and hit resume and resume here. And uh, I'm just going to uh, add a backward fill for that. So backward, there it is. And uh, instead of the red, I'm just going to use simple black. There it is. Okay, getting, we are getting there. Okay, now, uh, yeah, let's add some logic here because I think that uh, now it's a good time to add the is active kind of state here. Like, let's see, uh, if the uh, lab, if the progress 
is active, then we don't want to show this play button. So let me just uh, add in string interpolation, interpolation here. So is active. So if this is active, we want to have this as pause. Otherwise, we want to have this as play. Okay, let's just remove this. There it is. Okay, now for the system image name, again, if uh, is active, then we want to have this as pause dot fill. Now, otherwise, we want to have this as play dot fill. Okay, and we can remove this. There we go. And likewise, let's just add the system image. So there it is, is active. If this is active, let's have a question mark here. Uh, then we want to have uh, pause dot fill. And otherwise, we want to have play dot fill. Okay, and we can just safely remove all of this. There we go. Okay, so on the foreground color, let's have is active. Now, if this is active, this means that we are in the pose. So if this is active, then red should be okay. And otherwise, let's use dot yellow. Okay, font on tap judge recognizer is the same. Now, uh, yeah, basically that's it. Now let's take a look before we dive into the timer. Let's take a look at this 0 0.5. And I will just type this out right yet. Let me just uh, remove, uh, copy it simply out and I will just explain this. So yeah, I know it's, it's a long one, but let me just explain. So what we are doing here is basically grabbing the default time, which is still remaining and then, uh, um, subtracting the time remaining that we actually have like 10, 9 and, and so on. And uh, we divide it by the default time remaining. All of this is subtracted by uh, from 1. Now, why do we want to subtract it from 1? That is because the from and 2 is from 0 to 1. So this is how we're just going to go back to 0. Now let's talk a little bit about the stroke color and yeah, I would just copy this out again and paste it because it's really hard to kind of uh, type that out. It takes a little bit of more time, but actually what I'm doing here is checking whether the time remaining is more than six. If it is, then color green is okay. Otherwise, again, I'm checking if the time remaining is more than three. If it is, then yellow is the color. Otherwise, red is the color. So pretty straightforward in my opinion. Okay, so what else do we have? Yeah, it's time to implement the timer. So uh, let's go down to the labels and um, what do we do? Well, when we tap on the uh, play pause button, we want to set the is active. Come on, okay. We want to simply toggle that. So toggle, there it is. Uh, and basically that's it. We want to, when we want to resume, we want to set is active uh, equals to false. There it is. And we want to set the time remaining, time remaining to the the come on default default there it is default time remaining yeah because yeah you saw on the ui kit version you want to go back to its original state now here comes the interesting part uh, we want to set this on the actual let me just scroll all the way up on the v stack so when we are just going to scroll down we want to set an on receive uh, of our timer, as you can see, there was the publisher. We want to perform some stuff. Now, first of all, we want to check if this is still active. So, guard uh, is active. 
else we want to return else there it is okay so if is active is set to true then we no longer want to uh, go forward now here again we uh, check if the time remaining is more than zero and do the stuff you already saw this in the ui kit version so if time remaining is more than zero we want to set the time uh, remaining minus equals one let me just scroll a little bit up so else we want to set is active to false and we want to set the time remaining to the default time remaining default time remaining so i know this has been a lot of code and we didn't refresh our simulator like the preview basically but let's do that right now because i think we are ready so uh, let's hit this play button all the way up and uh, again play as you can see it's counting down the circular progress view is really really nice and it's going back and it's animating when we tap on pause it pauses if we tap on play it continues and now upon six it transformed into yellow upon three into red and now once it's zero it's going to go all the way back and make itself to green and of course the zero transforms into 10. now if we just go ahead and hit resume here it goes all the way up to 10 and to become uh, the green progress view that's really really nice now those are some nice animations for a countdown timer now if you did like this video go ahead and hit that notification bell and smash that like button and while you are at it make sure to check out rebeloper.com mentoring where i can help you one-on-one -on, -one on your coding issues now while you do that make sure to check out these videos as well too i talk a lot about swift ui ui kit swift in general and as usual i will see you in the next one